Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with some more NTW3 action for you today and we have a glorious battle at Friedland as we have the French facing off against the Russian Empire as the Russians have invaded and are now trying to liberate Prussia from French control. So we do have four French corps here today, we have a corps under Bernadotte as you can see here coming across the golden fields of Prussia. We have Murat here with his entire French cavalry corps, so he has a bit, we, France has a lot of cavalry here today, an entire core of it, in fact. We have Lanz here, uh, who is like taking up the center, and then over on the far side, the right flank, we have Ney here, who's actually just won a little cavalry victory out here. Looks like we see maybe it's like some Cossacks or something, and they have been defeated by some Chasseur Cheval here. So yes, the Battle of Friedland was in fact a victory for the for the French, as most of the uh, battles were at this point in history, the French were just unstoppable as we have. It looks like another, looks like maybe a Hussar, you know, something like that. Being defeated there by uh, Ney as some Laguerre scare them off. But yes, the Russians were defeated here. They lost about 20 to 40,000 men uh, to about 8 to 10,000 French. And, I mean, it was a fairly, like, fairly, like unfair battle for the Russians. They had about 20,000 less men. There was about 80,000 French against 60,000 Russians. So, I mean, the, yeah, the Russians already outskilled, also outnumbered. Yeah, they had no chance really in this one. And this is an elite army, you got to think. This is the army that's been battling in uh, Prussia against Austria. It's been everywhere with Napoleon, this Grand Army. And it's, yeah, very, very elite at this point. So, yes, this also ends the uh, fourth coalition, like all the land campaigns of the fourth coalition, and it is the start of the Russian involvement in the continental system, which is basically like Napoleon's, Napoleon's version of the EU, basically, is how I like to describe it. We have another Russian charge here, seems like they're going to go and try and take on these Chasseur Cheval, are uh, these, it looks like some Ulans here, not some Cossacks, but just some, like, Russian Ulans. Looks like they are having just as much luck as those Cossacks did earlier, but yes, we mean the French cavalry, that's for sure, but that's fine. The French got plenty. Like I said, Murat has got an entire French cavalry corps, which we're seeing right now come up the center of this line here. We've got Dragoons. We've got, yeah, I'm sure we're going to see plenty of Dragoons in this, actually, actually in this corps, which is always a good, uh, good sign. Dragoons are always a good medium, sort of like cavs, I like sort of break. Not like, they're still quick, but they're like just as effective, I say, as uh, cuirassiers in many, uh, many scenarios. We also have some more cavalry over here. This lands is cavalry. We've got some Hussars out here. I imagine the Russians have brought their own Dragoons and maybe even some cuirassiers. They've got lots of Dragoons here, that is for sure. I'm even seeing Russian infantry now fire. What are they even firing at? That's what I want to know. Sir! What are they firing sir, at? Our general is under attack. I'm not quite sure what they even can hit. Like, unless they've got incredible range, what are they firing at? We do have a general actually under attack here. Look at this. We actually have a uh, French captain broken here. Chasseur Cheval and Dragoons. And a massive carry fight going on here. Really early on. Lots of French Dragoons getting in here. Mixed in with the Russian Dragoons. Look like they're going for the Russian guns initially. There's uh, Jacques Millet cavalry here winning that fight and they're gonna be able to rush onto those guns so yeah there you go the french cab coming in nullifying these guns they're big russian guns as well that have been taken out really really early on there and you can see with the french not surrounding the russian morale should start to crumble you imagine another good time we do see russian lights in here and in fact a general by the looks of it as well maybe yeah i mean if the french Lose this fight, there's a lot of cavalry they're gonna lose, and like that whole cavalry corps is gone. See, more cavalry are now arrive. French just about holding on. They have lost another, like, La Police Generale, some dragoons there. Looks like they might lose Jacques Millet, dragoons as well. Yeah, they did, and it looks like this one uh, Colonel General dragoon unit is probably gonna break as well, you imagine. There you go, that's gone as well, and all of a sudden Murat's looking a lot weaker on the ground. He's got some more dragoons back there. They look like they rallied. Uh, he's got some carabineers over here. These are really good cavalry. This is a really elite cavalry unit, uh, usually. And we've seen these guys in action before at the Battle of the Name. They did really, really well there. And they're going to do really well, well, I'm sure, again. They're, like I said, a very heavy cav unit. Very, very nasty. But, yeah, this is a real bad sign here for the French cav already. Like, they've taken a lot of like, losses there early on. And we're seeing a big live battle now take place in this wood over here. We've got the... Russian Musketeers, they're opening up. Uh, 
They're all in their great coats ready for battle. This is the 1807 uh, Russian army. So they're not actually like in their great war, great patriotic war uniforms yet. They've got, got to change those yet. They do look much nicer in those uh, red and green uniforms and these red and white, uh, these green and white ones, sorry. Yeah, so they're going to go in here against um, just some line infantry. And they're going to get a brutal volley as they go in and they're going to break almost immediately. Because if you want to see more NTW3 action and would like to, uh, yeah, make sure you like, don't miss out on a single bit of NCW3 action. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe from around here, and a comment show your support. And feel free as well to hit that notification bell so you know when every single NTW3 battle is out. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys can just help, help support the channel as we work towards 7k subs as we're getting ever closer by the day. But yes, yeah, so we have the Chasseurs out here. I mean, at least like some of the other like cores that bring cavalry. I mean, Murat. Okay, Murat's got plenty back here. He's just left loads out on his right flank. Uh, he did lose a bunch in the sense, though. Got Guard Capet here. This is like a good... Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen these guys do insanely well before. This Guard Capet Dragoon unit. We've got more Dragoons here. Just more, just more Dragoons. And it seems like, most of, seems like most of his cavalry is returning, though, as well. Which is always a good sign. Murat is actually here as well. Rallying the cavalry. So that's always good to see. Has he sent any out here as well? He has. He has sent a bunch of cav out here. So, to be fair, I, me saying early on that Murat had lost a lot of cav and it was over his court. Maybe a little bit early to say. It does seem as though he did move out a lot to both flanks to support, which is always good. Good to see. He's a, a good teammate and hopefully he can micro equally as well because he is all over the battlefield. He's like on this flank. He's on this flank. He's in the center. Yeah, he's got a lot to do. But yeah, it seems as though this side is just about to get underway. It seems like the uh, French as well here. <laughs> Maybe Murat's got more than I thought. His cavalry just seems everywhere. I don't know how much he's spent, but yeah. I mean, this is lands. You know that. But yeah, Murat's just cavalry seems to be everywhere, these Dragoons. And we're seeing a Russians now move up here in this forest once again. They had retreated slightly, and now they are back with a vengeance. You can see the volleys going off. This time they're supported by cavalry. As you can see here, there is a... Uh, Cavalry being moved up. It's always good to see. <laughs> the French put up a great volley just like that. Always good to smell gunpowder in the morning. What a way to wake up to a Napoleonic battle. Just a cheval here. Yeah, these are so much. They could really overwhelm this Russian line. I'm sure the Russians as well can't form square. The French looks like they can mostly form square. Maybe a bit 50 50. But the French certainly, I know, are like they use a more commonly known for forming square. And we have another bayonet charge here. Russians appearing out of nowhere, out of the forest, bayonet charging into the French here. Russians and French both pretty good in bayonet battles, so I'm sure the Russians fancy themselves here. We've got Chasseur Cheval going in, they are going in against these musketeers here. Not the greatest of charges as it's through a forest. Look at the officer down there for the Russians. He's like, I must hold the line for my men. For my men and for the Tsar. You can already see Russians breaking along the line here. Being hit hard by French volleys, I think, from the flank. It's not helping morale. The Russians over here still dueling. They're not quite so eager to go into a bayonet battle just yet. The officer just holding his sword like, I am pretty useless in this scenario. I just have to stand here and hope I don't get shot. But yeah, here we go. Look at this. Dragoons coming up now. There's a lot of support. Seems like now that the infantry's kind of had its little bayonet fight it's out of out of stamina and now the cavalry takes over i mean it's like i said though not great charges because it's through a forest i can't imagine this is really the most effective way but it is working and the uh, dragoons have routed another unit there and now charge into this unit but are getting hit hard by it must be fire and they have probably forced retreat as you can see here i'd get out of there if i was them over on this far side over here let's see what is going on Let's see, there is a line battle going on over, over here. And we have Russian cavalry. Look at this. Cossack sneaking in, taking out a French gun just like that. That is huge. It's been very, very handy. I don't know what gun that was, but it probably something like an 8-pounder maybe or something like that. And the uh, the French infantry here just watch on as they just watch their comrades get cut down. The Russians certainly look like they're outnumbered over here. That is for sure. I 
thought maybe was it a guard? A guard unit, but it is not. These guards are regular infantry. They just seem like they're maybe just overstretched. General, a general has been killed. Take. Oh, the Russians have lost a general here. This is huge. Early, early doors. And this Russian army here in the forest being pushed hard here by Ney. Still got a lot of infantry as well that's still rallied. We've got healthy cav as well back here. These are like dragoons. Yeah, they've got a uh, they've got a tough fight against them. That is for sure. You can see the French really, really pushing hard here with his side unit. Where he's going on? Oh, he's going for this artillery position. That is for sure. And you can see Russian cav desperately trying to chase him down. You can see here that the hussars broke just like that though. They were annihilated. The Russians getting forced back on this side. Just some skirmish has been broken. But uh, yeah, it's always going to see them being pushed back. The Russians, those pesky Ruskies. You can see over here, they're still setting up actually. These look like they might be guard. Or at least grenadiers or something. They just look a little bit more professional, these troops here. Maybe it's just because they're not with great coats. That might just be it. Oh, for sure, these are just like. I think these are just basic infantry. You can usually tell what the guard looks like. They're usually in their red, gold, and uh, green. And they are certainly not. See, like I said, the French resetting up. They have a much thinner lines, I guess, so they can fire as many guns as possible. I will, I thought, though, in N2 to be honest, firing in column is much more effective. A much more effective way. Keep more morale. But we'll see how this goes. I mean, Bernard Ross seems like he's doing an okay job. Let's have a volley. For Napoleon. For the Emperor. There you go. And we got another Russian charge coming in here. Let's see if these Cossacks can get in. Will the French form square? They don't, they can't even form square. Oh, and an unsuspecting charge. They stop very abruptly there. So they are actually gonna break these French units in. Look at that, morale shattering. And now the French sending in some Dragoons. They're going to route those Cossacks. The Russians are pushing up in their bayonet charges. Oh boy, big push here. And the Dragoons counter it. Look at this, the French going with Dragoons on all flanks. And we now also have some cavalry over here, some Hussars going in. But oh boy, it's all going off, but look at this. This looked like a really good move by the uh, by the uh, Russians for a moment. And now it's turned into catastrophe. As French and... As French cavalry and infantry combine. Oh boy, I mean the French have lost one infantry unit, two infantry units. To be fair, actually, maybe the Russians... Yeah, the Russians and the French came out of that with a draw, really, I'd say. Dragoons here have been routed. Uh, and, uh, wow, actually, I'd say maybe the Russians did win this. I thought these carriers were just treating maybe to do another charge, but no, they, they routed. They fully routed. They're a bit away from the red line. They may return. But the Russians did, in fact, win that, and they routed this entire Russian... Uh, this uh, entire French left, sorry. I'm kind of surprised. Here we go. Another charge. They did a little bit of a volley. Now they're going to charge in. I mean, morale is low for the French. Maybe the Russians can reclaim some sort of honor on this side. Are they going to change history at Friedland? I don't know. We'll have to find out. But if you want to get involved in any of these NGW3 battles, um, or just want to send you in your own NTW3 replays and feature on the channel, feel free to join the Discord. Link is down below in the description. That is the best way to send your replays to me. And if you also want to support the channel in any other way, go and check out my merch. If you want to go and pick up some a papal t-shirt or jumper, or just support the channel in any way that you want to. Look at these uh, hussars here harassing Bernadotte's infantry right now. And they are, uh, they're doing some devastating work, to be fair, it's this, uh, this Russian right. The Russian, yeah, I guess it is Russian right on the French left, yeah. So that makes sense. The center is also now getting underway here. You can see the Russians are forming up. French having a good old duel here. Staring off the Russians, in fact, you can see them running for their lives. You can see more Russians sitting up. This mod is just glorious. Really, really is. This is amazing. But yes, it seems as though the French are having a lot of success in a lot of areas. And certainly this uh, the center, well, they seem to be pushing back the Russians at least. And certainly on this side here, 
it seems as though. I mean, the, I mean this uh, Russian army over here has lost its general, so I mean, it's in it's in a bit of disarray. I mean, there's still like I'm being a bit of the center is still yet uncont uncontested, but I don't know if the Russians are really this far out. There is some cavalry, but they may be just merely scouting. I don't know if there's any infantry really support that. But it seems as though the Russians over on this side may be changing stuff. They seem like they're doing good work. And it certainly seems like it's helping with the guns. They have these guns here. I'm not quite sure what size they are. Maybe like a six pounder or something. But these things are putting holes into this French line. And the French don't have any guns to respond. Because you remember, the Cossacks took them out really, really early on. Well, not really early on, but a few moments ago. So the volley. And here we go. The cavalry's had enough of those guns. They're going to come forward, but the Russians have got their own cavalry that can match them. Hussars versus Dragoons. And the Hussars have won, beating those French Dragoons back very nicely. And though Russia seems like he's outgunned here, he seems like, I don't know. He just, I think he's got troops in this forest. Uh, I think he's trying to lure the French in and then flank him. But it just seems like he's outnumbered, certainly, on this flank. He seems like he's holding himself really well. I mean, we can't see everything as the Russians. It is from the French perspective. But still, they a good job of the Russians. But they may be about to lose these units here. They're getting hit hard now by a big charge of the Dragoons from Murat here. And here we go. Into the back, he's going to go with this unit here. This is going to be brutal. Yep, broke before he even hit the lines. And there you go, all these have been broken. And my past comments of that the Russians are doing well on this flank may be about to uh, may be about to be changed. I don't know. It seems like they're going to need more cavalry. Yeah, here you go. Russian cavalry coming out. We've got some Cossacks. I don't know if they'll stop them. They may help. I mean, they can certainly do more infantry in this duel here. Anyway, let's go and see how it's going on this side. The French have crossed the river. They've got some Carabineers du Battalion. Some elite Laguerre. They do look good. They kind of look like they got their old guard, but they're like basically old guard, I could say, you could say, for the, the light infantry almost. They are really elite, uh, like light infantry. But then at the same time, you could say Chasseurs of the Guard are the real light infantry of the guard. But I, I wouldn't really count those lights. Dragoons winning here against Russian infantry. It's always good. The Russians, I'm surprised, have not gone in to try and deal with this uh, Dragoon unit. Here they go with their own Dragoons. Probably will take it out. Yeah, the Dragoon has been routed. What we've got coming up here? Carabineers. These guys, they've already been in a fight. They are pretty weak. And so we missed it. Oh, yeah, that was a huge cavalry fight here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, we've seen that. That was early on. Hope you're dumb. You're forgetting what's happened. The Carabineers, yeah, hit hard. Earlier on. This is going to be a fight. And then now, we're we'll trying to turn this one around. You can see you've got more Dragoons coming in. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. A lot coming in now. I think the French might lose their Carabineers. Maybe combat and winning. Hard to say, there's a lot in here. So many men and horses dying. For what? There you go, carabineers have been broken. Looks like the Russians bring up some infantry to try and support that. And then it seems as though. Seems as though they're kind of just holding off on this flank here. It seems like Ney is just uh, holding on. It seems like this cavalry fight, they might decide who holds the center. Not the big Russian cavalry unit coming in. Oh, these are cuirassiers. Here we go. I did wonder where they were. I was sure that the Russians would have brought some cuirassiers, and they have, and they've routed everything. And now the Russians can duel with the uh, the French here. It seems like they've also tried another little cavalry assault here. Looks like some goons tried to do a little assault. The French form square, and we're prepared. Now the Russians form, form up and they're going in for bayonet charge. Renegades they're fighting though. I don't know if they'll win that fight. Though they don't, they back themselves to the Russians. They are good in a fight. But not well enough. They got defeated. More Russians going in over here.
the line battle going on around them. I mean, it's brutal. It seems like the French, they lost their grenadiers in a charge there. The cavalry now coming forward to try and take advantage of these French units all in melee. Here they go. Look, they're going to go in. This is always a good tactic. Send in infantry. Let it break or something like that. Well, not even let it break. Just like try and pin it down. I mean, this was lucky that the, the infantry broke. The cavalry charging in the back would have probably broken it anyway. But, uh... Pinning units down in melee with infantry against infantry and then having the cab go in like hammer and anvil just like in any total war works a dream. It really does. Yeah, as you can see the cavalry doing well. <laughs> cavalry and cannons, infantry. Oh, it's so Napoleonic. It looks glorious. Such a great era of like warfare. Everyone's in bright uniforms. Oh, it's glorious. There's fighting with honor. Lots of breaking going on over here. What is going on exactly here? Well, the Russians are just assassinating artillery pieces back here. And they've taken out Murat. Murat is uh, broken. Not dead, but he's broken. What is going on also? Oh, there's a four pounder here. This French army over here just seems like it's been stopped in this track. I don't know why, really. Maybe just lack of cavalry support? Seems like the French, though, are starting to win, and they've defeated that Curassia unit. The uh, Dragoons came up here, and they've done the job. But yeah, the French, after a brutal fight here against all of that uh, Russian Dragoon and bayonet charging, has just about survived that. My gosh, it's been a brutal one, though. And there we go. I think that's Murad dying. He was getting chased down by a Russian cab. Let's have a volley for the aircraft! I love the Laguerre. I think Laguerre looks really, like, they really look really, really good. And they're in their awesome little shackos. But yeah, they're being forced back. It seems like the Russians were holding infantry in reserve. And that fresh infantry coming up now is certainly helping. French cab over here still trying to look for ways around the Russian army. They did lose uh, another Dragoon there. No surprise. These Dragoons seem like they're being thrown away like they mean nothing to the French. Yeah, it is looking very, very close right now. I mean, the Russians certainly seem like they're holding on and they're inflicting a lot of French casualties. Our men are running, sir. All breaking here. This is by lands. Land seems like he sent over troops over here. Or is this just all lands? I think it is all lands. I thought maybe Ney was here as well. You know, this is just all lands. <laughs> These bayonet fights continue on. My gosh. This is not the only way the Russians want to fight. These might be some sort of guards. I don't know. They're funny poops. They just they might be. They might be. I don't know. Or well, grenadiers, at least. Either way, they're not doing great, whatever they are. They may just be basic infantry. Warm up, man! Volley! Yeah, they hit and hard into another volley. There's more Russians coming. They're just relentless right now. Surely there's a better way to fight Russia. Surely this is a costly way. I mean, there's only so many bayonet charges that will work. I mean, the French, I guess, maybe have better accuracy than the Russians. The Russians usually have numbers. The Russian general back there. Can they, can they take him out? I don't know. French here look like they're uh, a little bit battered. And they've been broken, but I mean, the French will just go back in and they'll rout the Russians, so no ground will be taken. It's a war of attrition on this side. It seems like the French here, you can see, look, Bernadotte has given up. He's gonna retreat. I'm surprised. I'm very, very surprised. Ney over here again. I mean, they're having some fighting, but just not a lot. Like, none really at all. I don't know 
why he stopped on this man. He seemed like he had the, the, the Russians on the uh, on the retreat. Our men are running. I mean, he's, I guess maybe he's worried that he doesn't know where the, the Russian army is. It's maybe the forest. And there you go. He's been surprised. It's all here. Right in front of him. I mean, where it's been all game, I'm sure. And he takes one massive volley and retreats. He's like, nah, I'm not having any of that. I mean, he needs to get a move on his name because otherwise the Russians can maybe try and send troops over support over here against Lance oh, and burn it up. Lance right now is having a brutal fight. It just seems like he's fighting consistently in bayonet here. Constantly. I mean, he's fighting consistently in bayonet, but it's constant and it is wearing him down. French have cavalry in behind, by the way. They have a like, dragoon just waiting. They could go in at any point. This is just constant. Just a constant flow of Russians. I mean, that does sound very Russian, to be fair. Constant flow of Russian men to fight and die. There you go, the Russians breaking there, but also the French be broken. And the Russians finally give in and realize this is just a not a worthy tactic. It's just not work for them. Their general is just about sneaked out as well, by the way. The Russian general is on the move. You can see that the Russians trying to slow down the French, forcing the form square so the Russian infantry can catch up and look at this. They're gonna get this one. Are they gonna route it? Yep, they did. Look at that, an easy little victory there for the Russians. We can go into the next one as well. And there you go, the French have been routed here. They're going to get routed in this one. It looks like Bernadotte might be about to get knocked out of the game. I mean, Murat certainly without coward, there's not much of his call left. The Russians for sure have numbers in infantry. They have the quality though. Seems like we've got a Russian general here in combat. This is not a good sign. If he loses his general... Yeah, there you go. Another general dead here. This is the Russian general who's been killed off. This could do absolutely... Havoc to the Russian morale over here. Ney is now getting assaulted by Russians on a lot of fronts right now. Oh boy. The French try to retreat, maybe to open up some ground between them so they can put a few volleys into them. They need these French troops over here moving. I know there's a load of Russians in front of them. They need to maybe get a bit closer. The French trying to flank around on this left-hand side here. They have one, two, three, four, five units here. They're going to try and flank the Russians. They have, in fact, routed three Russian units already. They are still fighting desperately, though, with this one. The guy here about to do a bayonet charge. Route these Russians once and for all. And there you go. They're gone. So Ney has just about held on in that one assault there. Still waiting for uh, Murat's last carry unit by the looks of it just to get committed. I mean, I don't know if it is actually the last one. No, no, he's got another one back here. He's low on cav though. But I don't know if the Russians have got any more themselves. They may have a couple of Cossacks. They could be handy for taking out generals if we could get to say like lands or something like that. But hard to say if they will. French here. Battling over this already destroyed field. As you can see, the abandoned cannons, the dead bodies. It looks glorious. It really does. Like, tell me this is not art. Tell me this is not art. The French infantry in the foreground, the cannon, the Russians at the back. There's, you can see the, uh, the light of the church as well. Oh, it looks good. Russians 
been scared off. They had enough of that. But he doesn't like it though. Bernadot is uh, getting out with just about nothing here. It was a hard fight. And I mean, I've got to give it to the... Uh... There's still fire in their artillery back there, by the way, are the Russians. Jeez. The Russians did a really good job over here. They actually managed to deal with the French cab, which I feel like just outnumbered them. And they've they've also just like managed to just outmaneuver the French. I feel like the French just had too many infantry units just dealing with the, the Russians. And they could have tried to flank them, maybe. Try and get a few different angles. Um, I feel like that's what you could have, they had to try and do. Maybe just try and get around them a little bit more. Because the Russians, in the end, were quite happy. They're just dealing them with them, like, one-on-one, -on -one, head-on. I don't know. It's hard to say. But the Bernadot, I think, just got out outplayed. Simply outplayed. Look at the officer here. He's like, men! We may be defeated, but we'll take as many of these goddamn Russians down with us! Glorious sight, a glorious sight. Here we go, the Dragoons coming up. Looks like they're gonna battle for this town here. Is this the town of Friedland? Yeah, it is. French for not. I guess this is maybe their objective. I don't know, I mean, I would've thought entire annihilation of the, the Russians would've been good enough. Look at this, they're boxing up. They're just preparing for this uh, charge from the Dragoons over here who are getting hit hard. And a big bayonet charge now by the Russians on Ney. And this, this could be costly. Also, they bayonet charge and now they're forming up to fire. The French, as you can see here, are making angles. They're trying to force the Russians, like boxing them up almost. You can see on this flank as well, they're pushing hard. They will eventually flank around them. They have the numbers to do so. But once one flank crumbles, this whole formation will crumble. It's not the greatest. It's like a, a horseshoe formation going on here. Some lights here for the Russians. It's not so many of these today. And they're all green uniforms. The Jaeger, as they call it, something like that. The Russians being defeated here. And they're going in for a charge here. They've been shot in the flank while being charged as well. Not a good combo. A good effective way to like these infantry units here just getting three shots into the flank. I'm sorry, but I see a bayonet charge going from the Laguerre. Well, look at that light infantry just gunning them down. French getting charged here with bayonets. It seems as though the army facing Ney just went for one last hurrah and trying just to rout these. Units, but I mean, they've been unlucky. I feel like they did a good job. They they, they stopped Ney's advance, and it seems as though the Russians are doing a really good job over here. They still are, really. I mean, if they could just hold on and hope that the the Russians here in the center and the and the Russian right can win, and they could just survive. They could have done fine because now the French got a bunch of troops that they got back. They're going to be free to send them over here. Otherwise, this is a really close and even battle on this front, uh, this center here. And, well, I guess it's all going to become the center moment. But you can see the Russian right and the French left are all coming over here. Or so slowly coming over here. So this center battle is looking pretty even right now. It won't be long when Ney's core arrive, which I'm sure the French will wait for. Russians taking pot shots. I mean, I don't know how good the Russian accuracy is, but this must be challenging it because I can't see the Russians in this, uh, this range. The French are hitting some, but yeah, if I remember correctly, the Russians have got not as, not as good morale. It looks like uh, morale accuracy. Sorry, probably not as good morale either. 
you can see the Russians. They're all uh, moving in. They're going to try and just get into Friedland and try and lock it down. Deny those French any access in here. I mean, there's a general left, but yeah, there isn't much left. They haven't got any guns. I mean, they are only guns all the way over there. It's going to be rough. They're already actually building. Well, actually, I think there is. What building in, in here can you actually take as the French? Oh, it's this one here. This one here. Okay. Thought they were gonna form up, but they were not, in fact. Anyway, we'll fast forward a little bit as uh, the French are just mopping up a little bit. So we'll see what we can, uh, what we can do. What they can do? I mean, they, I don't know. Maybe they'll um, assault the town, like the actual village, or maybe they'll just try and focus fire on the building. That's also another way to just like break the morale and then maybe send in a unit. I don't know if they've really got any grenadiers. Um, I don't even think they've got any like carabineers, like gear yeah, to send in. They're gonna be short on elite infantry to really get into that building. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a tough one. Gonna be a tough one. But as you can see here, French flanking on around. I don't know what this Russian unit is doing. It's doing a strange formation. Strange formation. Are they going to reload? Reload, boys. Fire! For the Tsar! For the motherland! I love all the screaming and stuff, it's just like, ah! <laughs> it seems like a very unrealistic way that you would uh, die. I don't feel like that would be anyone's last words. Or reaction. Well, I don't know, maybe. Maybe it would. Maybe I'd just go, ow, when you're getting hit by a bullet. Some weaks units here. The Russians coming back, though. Look at this. You can't forget this little army here that did actually survive. It was boxed up. Kind of being uh, harassed by cavalry, though. And it is, I mean, Ney's core is also on the way, as you can see here. I mean, there's also Russians rallying in the forest, but once the unit's broken once, it's never the same again. That's what I say. There's still Russians over on this side of the river. More Russians rallying in the town. Looks like they're going to try and challenge this French unit here. Not a bad idea. If these guys retreat a little bit more, um, I mean, I guess they don't want it because otherwise they get shot on the flank. But if you get the support of this infantry unit in the in the building, that would also help. But yeah, the morale is already starting to drop for this, this Russian infantry unit here. Looks like we have seen some charging here. Yeah, French cavalry has gone in. It dared to do, and it did, did in fact route two Russian units. This one did form square, though. Yeah, I mean, there's some big cavalry fights today. I mean, there's just been a brutal, brutal fight. I mean, we got a big cavalry fight here. Look at that. Another one over here. Some huge, huge fights. I mean, the, the forest over here just littered with bodies. My gosh. If you want to see more battles like this, do let me know. Do leave a like. Do uh, drop a comment. And feel free to subscribe as well if you haven't already. But yeah, there's some massive fights. Just massive pile up of body. One of the other ones, the other big ones is over here. Just outside Friedland. Oh, this is brutal. This mod, I mean, the battles just look brutal, in it? They really do. We've got French infantry now piling out. I don't know where they've come from. But the Russians are charging in. They've not changed their tactics. They've not changed their tactics and the results are still the same. This is not good. Oh, a Russian cab. Uh, Russian cab. French cab, sorry. Going to the backs here. French cab. Trying to charge the back of the square. While also French infantry shoots from the front. It's a risk because this is the thing. Do you form square and save yourself from the cavalry? But then you become an easy target for the infantry. Or do you save yourself from the infantry by staying in line and get killed by the cav? Personally, I've formed square. Just, I think his chances of survival are slightly better. Got Russian infantry going in here now. Again, bayonet charging is what they're trying to do. A 
guess it's just in the blood to use their bayonets. Seems that the Russians attacking Friedland here today is not going to work. Or attacking the French at Friedland. I don't really know. Yeah, I actually don't know who is the aggressor in this battle. I know I know a fair decent amount about this battle, but I guess maybe the maybe it's the French, the aggressors, because the Russians are just kind of like chilling in Prussia. And the French are the ones that are the aggressors. They're certainly the aggressors that... Um, at the, oh, I'm trying to remember the name of that one now. The other battle in Germany that the Russians take part in. Well, they take part in a few more later on. A load of Russians broken here. And that'll probably be the end of them. And now May's Corps can come up and support here. I mean, really, I'd start flanking around. Maybe trying to come across these bridges here and try and use them as a way, another way in. Seems as though the French are also assaulting over here. They're actually trying to take the building off the Russians. This is maybe Bernadotte's last contribution to the battle, one of his final infantry units here. The 95th going in. Could be a big pile of bodies here. Looks like the Russians are going to hold. More fighting in the streets the other side of this building as well as the Russians have a bayonet battle here with the French. It just seems as though with the French having really good accuracy, and the Russians charging in. The French accuracy when they fire right before they hit the Russians hit them. It's just too much for the Russians. The Russians lose too many men, and it does a lot of damage to morale. Our men are running. And they lose most bayonet fights. But speaking of that, the French have just lost this bayonet fight, and they lost this other one over here. So those uh, final units of uh, Bernadotte's could be uh, gone. I mean, that's actually a lands one, but yeah, Bernadotte bringing up some Laguerre, but then there's not much left of them. But here we go, Ney now on the way. Ney on the way. Uh, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. This mod actually is glorious. I know Napoleon's an old game, but I still think it holds up in its own ways. Like this shot alone, it looks good. So you've got all the, uh, you've got the couple of troops in the foreground. And you've got the rest of their comrades in the back firing desperately. Looks like the French aren't going to get routed though here. Maybe. They're going to actually retreat first. The French have the numbers, I think. They can take this building. Uh, they can take this building and this town. Bernard Dot coming in in the uh, famous one-man column formation. It's a uh, very formidable formation. I would fear it. I don't know what they're really going to do with these Laguerre. I would honestly just use them to harass the French uh, for the Russians from another direction. But we'll see. We'll fast forward a little bit as uh, there isn't too much in the way happening. It's just a bit of a duel between these two uh, streets right now as the as the French wait on Ney's corps to arrive with what remains of his corps. I mean, he's still got some pretty healthy units. 120 out of 156. Pretty healthy. But uh, yeah, he is... He's going to need those troops, maybe try and flank around. If they had any artillery, that would be even better. Uh, the French, I think, do have artillery all the way back there. Yeah, they're not getting that anytime soon. And actually, looks like the Russians are rallying. It's just a couple of little units. Just two little lights. They're going to be challenging the French here. And the Russians have still got their artillery all the way over on that far side. Uh, the Dragoons there as well, still looking for a way in. Don't know if they'll find one. I think that Laguerre did go in, didn't it? That Laguerre went in and it's dead. Yep, you can see they're all piling out the building now. What fools. Yeah, we'll keep fast forwarding as the French just battle on here for the uh, for control over Friedland. The Russians now have got two units in each of these choke points here. Uh, so the French really need to be matching them at least, or if not outnumbering them, I'd say. Like, you would not take any chances at this point it's an uh, it's a, like a late late part of the game you don't know what's going on i mean the russians just disappeared there for a second they are like a hundred yards away i don't know how the french couldn't see them yeah if these uh french flank around here this is uh this is gg i would imagine 
The French just, like I said, have too many troops. If they held the rest in reserve and just played really flat, then they'd have no... The French might have given themselves a much tougher game. And now that they're flanking, the Russians don't have the men. More Russian troops arriving here. France is like, nah, I'm not having this. I'm not dealing with this. I mean, I definitely think he could have. Artillery piece coming up here. Look at this. The late pounder. Don't know how long he's been walking, but Murat's ca uh, cannon is on the way. Good grand is the line here, and these guys, I mean, they could be, I think they might be in the building. I think they are. I think they are in this building. They have been also routed. Yeah, they're fighting in the building. I'm also getting uh, shot up by the troops outside. So I think that might be burned or out, but I'm not sure. But made an attempt anyway on the building. Made an attempt. Attempt was made. And here we go. French. They're now just boxing in the Russians, like I said. Trying to get them from across the river and also from this like little bank here. So we'll see how this goes. And the answer is the Russians are going to retreat. They're not even going to try and deal with it. Fair enough, the Russians don't want to lose men where they don't need to afford to. Like I said, they don't have much left. The Russians are still fighting in here. I'm not quite sure how. But they are. They're still fighting in here. Russians gunning down their own men and the French in this assault here. No step back is coming a little bit earlier, like 130 years early. No step back or the Tsar will personally shoot you. These Russians, you know, their morale's not good looking good. The French put one size of volume there we could break those guys. Go Lance is uh, losing that fight as well. I swear Lance is still alive, so I'm sure that would affect him. Eight pounder here. Are they gonna just shell the building? I bet they do. Here we go, the French. Now it's their turn to attack with the bayonet. Now uh, they're the ones desperate to take out the Russians. They're the ones in a bit of a uh, rush. And you can see this bayonet charge is probably going to go too well. I don't know, green morale. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, that, that was risky. Morale-wise, seems as though the Russians are losing. The Maze Infantry unit here says he's losing slightly. And he's getting flanked, so I guess maybe he is. Here we go, the Ruskies are in here. More infantry going in. It seems like Maze is throwing in his full weight. As you can see, though, Russians breaking on both flanks here. Got more Russian set up though, they are ready to put pot shots in there. Scare the French back down the hill. French pushing in here. Being broken here as well. This is not a good sign. The general now in combat. Where he is. Sure. I'm not sure, but the Russian general is in a lot of trouble right now. General dead. And that house has been taken. And that is basically the battle. I mean, it's like a little bit of a skirmish out here, but that is going to be the battle today. Friedland has been retaken. Not retaken. Won by the French, I guess. Maybe if they held it before it was retaken. But I don't know if they did. Um, but yes, it seems though like history has been recreated. 
And it seems as though the French are going to be victorious once again. With a lot more casualties though, I think. I mean, certainly proportionally. Maybe not actually historically. Maybe they lost less. 8 to 10,000 casualties to take in NCW3 is pretty difficult. And I certainly hope the Russians haven't taken between tw uh, 20 and 40. Yeah, I'm going to just uh, make a cut here and I'll fast forward to the end screen for you guys. So uh, you don't have to just get watch through these like, nitty gritty little, just, like, little skirmishes. But I'll see you guys in a moment. Okay, guys, so it wasn't much more to uh, to wait, but there you go. They retook the building to the Russians, and the French had to go back in and retake it themselves. Um, but yeah, this was a glorious battle, uh, obviously from the usual group of Johnny Little Buffoon. They're obviously doing all these historical battles. They just love them. They, uh, they do a really good job. But yeah, well into him, to uh, Richard Lionheart, to Sniper Smith, and to Don, all really good players. Did a really good job as the uh, the French. Um, Johnny getting the most kills of 1500, playing as lands. Uh, Ney being played by Snipesmith, getting just short of 1400. Richard as Bernadotte, only getting 600 kills. Uh, and Murat getting 1000 kills with his mass cavalry army. Uh, well done to Clarky Boy, to Kingston, Angry Peasant, and to G as well. All did a really good job. I'll leave a link to Kingston's channel in the description if you want to go and check that out. He is a fellow NCW3 YouTuber. Uh, definitely go and check him out and support him. But he did really well, 1600 kills. As Russia, really, really well done. But yeah, there, we'll quickly have a look at the unit kills. Um, so yeah, as you can see, a line infantry doing pretty well. 215, 119 with another one, 186, 124, 121. Some really good kills though, actually. So uh, yeah, really well done to uh, to Johnny. And yeah, if you want to see more on TW3, leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show your support. And I'll see you guys in the next one.